Biden wants to end remote work for government employees. He loves working closely with people. Very close. Why U.S. workers are rage quitting harder than 12-year-old scrubs ranked in Fortnite matches. And did Taylor Swift save the world? That and more on this week's headline. Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. President Biden is pushing for federal employees to end remote work and return to the office after years of working from home during the pandemic. That sounds like a real boomer move from Biden, but it's actually not. First of all, Biden is older than baby boomers. And second, according to a report from the Government Accountability Office, millions of square feet of government office buildings are sitting empty with government agencies not even using half of their office space, and it's costing U.S. taxpayers billions to fund these leases. So instead of wasting taxpayer dollars by paying for empty offices, they'll waste taxpayer dollars paying for offices full of people who are doing just fine happily working from home. Hey, House Republicans, I think I found a spot where you can reduce spending, ending government office leases. Anyway, this move makes perfect sense. Biden kicked off a road trip in the Southwest this week to brag about his climate policy. And what better way is there to fight carbon emissions than making people commute to work again? But government employees who are sad about returning to the office can cheer up because yet again the government is in danger of shutting down by October 1st if they can't yet again agree on how to fund their operations. Bed Bath & Beyond is somehow in less danger of constantly shutting down. And they died! Their full name should be Bed Bath & Beyond the Grave. And New York City may be regretting becoming a sanctuary city as migrants flood the city. New York is struggling to find places to house the more than 57,000 asylum seekers that wound up in the city. Which is why New York City Mayor Eric Adams announced a plan to house up to 2,000 adult migrants in a tent city on Randall's Island in the East River. Are they kidding? How do I get in on that? I'm spending $3,000 a month for a cardboard box under the subway tracks. Why do migrants get better living conditions than most New Yorkers? And living by the river, come on, jealous. But I have a simple solution, which is why I should be elected Supreme Leader for life. Simply house the immigrants in the abandoned federal office buildings. While you're at it, you can probably house a lot of homeless people that way too. And I know what you're thinking, do we really want those buildings full of potentially mentally ill drug abusers that we don't know if we can trust? To which I say, they used to be filled with government employees, so I don't think anyone will notice a difference. Vote for me. And after the break, a hundred-year-old trucking company files for bankruptcy. Welcome back. Yellow, the nearly 100-year-old fifth-largest transportation company in the U.S., filed for bankruptcy. Yellow needed to refinance $1.3 billion of debt by next year, including a $729 million pandemic loan from the government. Yellow CEO announced he intended to sell Yellow's assets to pay back its creditors as much as possible. They took out a massive loan that crippled them financially and they have no hope of paying it back? Are they a trucking company or a philosophy major? So did Yellow blame its closure on supply chain issues, the pandemic, or mismanagement? No, nope, Yellow blamed its workers. The Teamsters Union threatened to strike over Yellow's proposed One Yellow strategy that would have hurt workers' wages for over a thousand truck drivers, but saved the company millions of dollars. Yellow filed a lawsuit against the Teamsters over this, and I gotta say, I side with Yellow on this one. Where's the workers' loyalty, the self-sacrifice, the company spirit? If I didn't know any better, I'd say these workers only took the job to earn a living and provide a better life for themselves and their loved ones. How selfish can you get? As a matter of fact, lots of unions are currently unhappy and striking. And many workers are unhappy and quitting. According to a report from LinkedIn, nearly 70% of Gen Z and millennial employees plan to leave their jobs by the end of the year, citing poor pay and dissatisfaction with their work as the reason. According to a study published in the Academy of Management Journal, several resignations are in response to layoffs, which has been on the rise this year in the U.S. Essentially, the most proactive career planning has become, you can't fire me, I quit. Meanwhile, the employees who didn't quit are often asked to pick up the slack for the ones who did, causing even more dissatisfaction. And I can relate. I have to work extra hard to fill the massive vacancy of credible journalists in the U.S. Over 11,000 municipal workers in Los Angeles went on strike for 24 hours on Tuesday for this very reason, among others. 
The workers' goal was to shut the city down for a day. They wanted to turn LA into a disorganized mess that's barely able to function. So nobody knows the difference. Well, except for the fact that Taylor Swift was in town, scheduled to perform six sold out shows. The crazy amount of union activity affected her too. Several California officials signed an open letter organized by Southern California's largest hospitality union. It asked her to postpone her shows to show solidarity with hotel workers, who have been staging rolling strikes that started last month. Los Angeles hotels made a massive profit in the lead up to Swift's concerts, charging double and triple rates to tourists coming to see the shows. The open letter reads, hotel workers are fighting for their lives. They are fighting for a living wage. They have gone on strike. Now they are asking for your support. Stand with hotel workers and postpone your concert. So basically, the officials told Swift, you belong with me. But she decided to shake it off and performed anyway. She probably thought, don't blame me. But now the officials and Swift have bad blood and are never ever getting back together. What a terrible end to what could have been a love story. I guess Swift is an anti-hero. And yes, I had to Google all those songs because I'm in my 30s and haven't listened to any new music since 2006. While Swift didn't show solidarity with Los Angeles hotel workers, it might be for the best because she's helping the economy. In addition to massive hotel profits, Swift's tour brought in $320 million to the Los Angeles economy. And market research firm Question Pro estimated that her current tour could add $5 billion to the world economy. So it's a good thing Taylor is re-recording her back catalog as that will help pump even more money into the global economy. Man, I don't think I've ever covered so much news about a single person before who wasn't the president. Swift says she's doing this because her old label sold the masters of these songs without giving her a chance to buy them and own them. But really, I think she saw the US hurtling towards a recession and realizing politicians weren't doing enough to stop it, she pulled a Thanos and said, fine, I'll do it myself. But while she's helping the economy, I'm sure the local politicians in LA are upset that she ignored their request to postpone her shows, because that means to help workers, they might actually have to pass some laws instead of asking a singer to do their jobs for them. As if being an artist wasn't hard enough, trying to balance self-expression with topping your last release, all while targeting the widest audience possible without succumbing to the urge to sell out, now they're expected to save America. I'd say that's unimaginably difficult, except I do that every time I release an episode of America Uncovered. Get to my level, Taylor. I'm the man. And yes, that's another one of her songs I had to look up on Google. Look what you made me do. And after the break, Republicans want to cut food assistance. Welcome back. House Republicans proposed cuts to the WIC food assistance program, which aids low-income women, infants, and children in the annual Department of Agriculture spending bill. This was in an effort to cut spending, which many Republicans feel is out of control. But Republicans also took issue with some of the cultural provisions and amendments in the budget, such as work requirements to receive aid and withholding funding for abortion and puberty blockers for children. This caused a rift between some Republicans and they weren't able to secure enough votes to pass the bill before the House left for its annual six week summer recess. This is disgusting, unconscionable, downright evil. How in the world do they get a six week break? Well, the members of the House aren't coming into the office. They vowed to keep negotiating. Maybe they'll have Zoom meetings. Although considering Zoom workers were ordered back to the office, I wouldn't be surprised if they became disgruntled and also wanted to strike. Zoom is the work from home app. And Zoom workers are being asked to no longer work from home? I'd say that's ironic, but irony in 2023 is about as dead as I am on the inside. The Senate is also in recess, but it wasn't a warm homecoming for Senator Mitch McConnell, who, while giving a speech in his home state of Kentucky, was met with boos and chants to retire. Man, that's just cruel. Mostly because if Mitch retires, then he'd spend more time with his family, and I'm not sure they want that either. Speaking of people spending time with kids, an investor in the anti-child trafficking movie Sound of Freedom was arrested and charged with accessory to child kidnapping. Initially, several media outlets reported that the man, Fabian Marta, was a major financier of the movie. However, he was just one of over 6,600 donors crowdsourced by the studio that produced the film, Angel Studios. So it's hard to call him a major financier. Also, the child kidnapping thing is a bit of a stretch. Marta's charges don't offer too many details on his arrest, but 
His lawyer claims Marta was essentially a landlord that interfered in a child custody dispute between one of his tenants and her aunt, and that the charges against him are unfounded, which is probably true. Because if there's one thing Hollywood would never in a million years tolerate, even for an instant, is a predatory producer that takes advantage of vulnerable people. And finally, this may surprise you, but Joe Biden has flip-flopped. And I don't mean he fell off his bike again. As a presidential candidate, Joe Biden vowed to put an end to for-profit immigration detention centers, saying no business should profit from the suffering of desperate people fleeing violence. But that's not quite working out as expected. Instead, private prisons are benefiting. According to the ACLU, while Biden issued an executive order directing the Justice Department to phase out contracts with private prisons, it excluded U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, or ICE. As of July 2023, the vast majority of immigrants ICE catches each day are housed in private detention facilities. And they are making bank. Private prison company GEO Group's revenue from ICE contracts rose 40% to over a billion dollars in 2022 which is shocking. Biden's policies actually helped someone make money, and they will likely earn even more. While border crossings dropped significantly in June, they're starting to pick back up again, and the number of ICE special agents stationed at the border has been increasing. The ACLU alleges the Biden administration not only hasn't ended Trump-era immigration policies, but expanded them by opening dozens of detention centers operated by private prison companies that received contracts including a guaranteed minimum number of detainees. The Biden administration's own oversight agencies recommended closing down some of these facilities due to poor conditions, but they have remained open. So essentially, Republicans think Biden's border policies are letting too many illegal immigrants into the country, and many Democrats are upset at how they're being treated. It seems like being president means making everyone unhappy. No wonder it ages you like guacamole. Well, except for Trump. He's aged like a McDonald's hamburger. Probably because you are what you eat. This makes Biden look like a liar and a hypocrite to many, and worst of all, he's ignoring the most obvious solution housing immigrants in all the abandoned federal office buildings. It's so simple. Come on, man. Vote for me. If you like our nonpartisan humorous take on the news, head over to patreon.com slash America Uncovered, click the orange button, and check out this video about the simple thing the U.S. could do to topple China's communist government. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.